Um, thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us. Um, we're here to talk about you know, how VR and immersive technologies can impact your work um, in distributed teams by providing horizontal impact across the business. Uh, so throughout this time, we encourage you to use the chats, uh, use the Q&A function. Uh, as uh, the moderator mentioned, we'll be following up with questions at the end. We will have Q&A. Um, but most importantly, what we hope that you get out of this is you walk away with a better understanding of how to use immersive technologies to enable your distributed teams. So with that said, my name is Josh Burton. I lead our global AV services team here at VMware. I'm joined by Zhao Chen, who's a product manager for global AV services. And we're both passionate about the XR space and have um, you know, both gaming and enterprise experience. So it's a perfect blend um, you know, mashup for us to be working in this space. Um, so we'll get into the, the content, but before we start talking about the cool stuff and the technology and you know what we're doing to enable our distributed teams i think it's super important that we talk about you know what our philosophy for the future of work is here at vmware this is kind of the the springboard and the the foundation for why we're doing what we're doing and with that you know we we you know have developed this vision for vmware that's free and flexible and you know leveraging innovative technology to support our colleagues even before the pandemic uh, you know, before the pandemic, you know, we had a strong vision of empowering our colleagues to do their best work uh, with the right tools, with the right technology, and the right support. And so that methodology really transpires in nicely into um, the approach that our team put together to help us navigate through the future of work. Um, and we've kind of got three pillars here that we use to, to drive this foundation. And those are our workforce, that's our people, um, our workplace, that's our physical spaces and spaces that we work out of and our work practices. Um, I'll talk about those just a little bit. So workforce, like I mentioned, is our people and everything about um, our talented colleagues here at VMware, how we recruit, how we train, um, how we lead through inclusion and diversity, and ultimately making sure that in this distributed model that we still have that career mobility and um, connection for our colleagues. With the workplace vertical, uh, this represents, um, this is interesting for me, it represents our physical spaces, and I obviously was uh, at VMware before the pandemic, but post-pandemic, you know, we, we think about our spaces, not in the 150 physical offices that we have around the world, but as the 34,000 spaces that our employees can work out of, right, so providing that collaboration and innovation for them to be productive wherever they are. And then finally, the work practices are the systems, tools, and processes uh, that our team uses to keep uh, the productivity within the teams and also the engagement at work um, within the different BUs, et cetera. So all of these pillars are founded in the, uh, uh, founded in the foundation of um, you know, leading with wellness and empathy, uh, having the engagement and community, and ultimately leading through our values, which we spent a lot of time on as a company uh, to develop, which are Epic Two values. So with that said, you know, I want to talk about our journey into you know, the VR and the immersive collaboration and how we're doing what we do today. Um, it's important to understand that before the pandemic, we had over 80% you know, of our full-time employees in fixed offices. They came to the office about two to three to four days a week. And we had a culture that was extremely focused around in-person activities and on-campus experiences. Um, you know, to highlight that, you know, when we started our VR um, you know, discovery program, the charter for this immersive technology program was to connect the then 7,000 remote employees to our campus, to our culture, uh, and to our events. Uh, and we were successful with that. Um, then the pandemic happened, and where are we now? So now, about 95% of our employees are working from home with about 70% of them still not comfortable coming into the office on a regular basis, right? Still wanting to be flexible. Um, and about 90% of our employee base feels that their jobs can be done, you know, um, virtually. So what does that mean for us and how we set up, you know, where we're going? Um, so like I mentioned earlier, where we're going is about choice and flexibility. Our offices are going to be designed around collaboration and innovation destinations um, versus workspaces. Um, but most importantly, we're going to evaluate as a company how we develop our software while staying connected and building the community with our um, colleagues. So for me, that's super exciting. And for Jal, I'm sure it's exciting too because she's on the team. But um, what that means for us is that, you know, we get to bridge these collaboration modalities. And what does that mean? Uh, I, I shared this video um, within our IT leadership um, offsite a couple of months ago to kind of just 
show the vision of what do I mean when I say we need to blend these 2D and 3D worlds? What is a metaverse? What does this look like? Um, so this is what I mean, right? Like, you know, creating an equal space that doesn't matter if you've joined in from Zoom, Teams, any, you know, um, st standard UC platform, um, any production studio, a conference room, whatever, you know, we want to provide the, the fabric to connect that. Um, so that's the vision. Here's what this means for us at VMware. Uh, at VMware, you know, we, we've spent a lot of time innovating in our conference rooms. And what we want to do is to take that vision and make it so that we can connect in our campuses, uh, we can connect in our virtual campus, we can connect on desktop, on mobile, in VR, and we all end up in this uh, hybrid space where we're collaborating and it's frictionless and we're able to have a productive um, session, no matter how you choose to work. Uh, so that's our vision. And the reality is, is that um, there's a ton of use cases within you know, VR that are enterprise ready. Um, we've spent a lot of time looking at all of these use cases. Our goal was to create a service that was consumable as a horizontal service across the company. Uh, and we've identified several use cases, whether it be field sales enablement or collaborations and meetings, remote working. Um, we've partnered with several uh, uh, companies and developers in this space, and we've seen extremely positive feedback from these use cases. However, there's still a couple of underlying challenges from adopting this technology at scale. I want to highlight those, but first I want to talk about, uh, let's have a little history lesson. So in 2007, the Apple iPhone came out and it was the mobile disruptor. Uh, everyone was all over this thing. You know, it was poised to be, you know, the disruptor of enterprise for connection and collaboration, um, connectivity, but it was missing a couple of key things before it took off and uh, became the device that it is today. We didn't have third-party applications. We didn't have um, a mobile mobile device management uh, platform to uh, uh, you know, to secure and manage and provision the experiences on this device. And we also didn't have an enterprise uh, application market uh, to be able to have specific experiences for enterprise um, and, and personalized experiences for our employees. So I look back at this and I draw similar parallels to what we're struggling with in VR today. And you know, the VR, the VR market is very poised and, and tailored to the gaming industry. There's no doubt about that. Um, there's a shift in that and there's more enterprise applications and services coming about. But if you look at the, the market landscape, net net, um, there's no true device management player. There's no enter enterprise security, no, no ability to provision all of these applications and great experiences um, that we're, we're creating. Um, and most importantly, the application market is still a little bit enterprise immature, if you will, right? Um, we're, we're, we're working with you know, developers that are used to making games and that's okay. I'm a gamer, Giles a gamer, we love games, but we're at work now and we need to make sure that that same security and rigor and stability are in the applications that we we used to do our um, day jobs at the enterprise are there in VR. So what did we do? We looked across the business and we feel that we've got a solution um, as we've partnered with many different teams and BUs um, around our vision here. And what the vision is, is if we eliminate the device management problem for XR devices as a whole, what we're going to do is um, enable accelerated growth in the emerging technology industry. And that in turn will um, support the um, acceleration of the verticals that the emerging technology industry supports, whether that be automotive or retail or you name it, right? Um, and the beauty about this vision for us is that it laid nicely within the VMware strategy of supporting any device, any application on any cloud. And so with that said, you know, we were able to take that learning and create a pilot program internally that we called VR at work. And what we were able to do here is we were able to um, creates a, a solution to manage these devices. And Jao's gonna talk about that here in a moment. But this program enabled us to, in uh, the fruits of this program, enabled us to deploy over 200 um, virtual reality headsets across our offices globally. Um, we were able to um, get about 300 uh, team members in our active community um, where, you know, our, it's a pilot community where they're testing applications with us, but they're also kind of our champions where they go out and they, you know, get business units and teams to buy into the solution. And with that, you know, we've had over 300 immersive and um, innovative meetings a month, um, you know, with, uh, with this technology. So with that said, I think you know, it's time to talk a little bit more about the technology. I'm gonna let Jal do a little bit of a deep dive into the launcher, into the experience and the applications that we're working with. So Jal. Thank you, Josh. 
Hey everyone, uh, this is Zhao. Uh, since I joined VMware, demonstrate the capability and potential of VR has been part of my work. But I was struggling to demonstrate the different use cases in VR uh, without device management. I spent extra time to make sure the headsets are ready to use, give guidance to the user without knowing their view, and, fair, and every application needs to have their own logins. I don't even need to mention how uncertain we're like if the demo were remote and distance. We know that device management is necessary to make the program success. We enroll the VR devices to Workspace ONE UEM console and provision the selected application to specific use group. Users view is locked in the single app mode on the launcher clients, and all the applications are secure with SSO login. We have the deployment team manage and deploy all the devices around the globe to employees' desired shipping location. Uh, we also, um, users sign in their devices by like one of many of their devices with device management. IT support team provides support through UEM console on every applications and configurations. Even with the remote assist uh, feature, that is the power of the device management. And we also foresee the importance of enriching the VR product portfolio and connecting the virtual and physical world. Onboarding enterprise ready vendors and applications are very crucial. Applications need to be ready to scale and every app experience needs to be seamless to all the users, such as single sign-on and two integrations. We partner with the HR, finance, R&D, sales, and many other departments demonstrate the value that VMware can potentially untap the enterprise market. Here are the top four applications that we are in use currently. Start from the first virtual handshake. VR meetings and collaboration boost the team's uh, cohesion and the engagement. It gave the new collaboration solutions for meetings with more interactions. The familiar or hour of imagination meeting spaces bring the distributed teams together and let the employee, uh, remote employees uh, feel connection again. We found that um, during this uh, VR program, whiteboarding and brainstorming sessions are being widely used according to our observation. Second, we have the immersive presentation and storytelling tool that enable new way of training and keynotes. Using 360 photos and videos to build the immersive and impactful presentation, share them to the colleagues and customers. The browser-based uh, web app will be able to engage the viewers through the desktop, mobile devices, and VR devices. We also use this platform for 360 uh, uh, campus tour and live streaming event. If any of you have interest to know more about these vendors and the partners, feel free to connect with us uh, after the webinar. We'll be happy to connect with you. We also prepare some live demo today to show you all. Now I will show share my screen and I will let Josh to lead the demo. All right, the exciting part. Um, so as uh, Jal gets set up here, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see her put her headset on and we're gonna show you a little preview of the launcher experience that we've partnered across the business to develop. So what you see here is what um, the single sign-on experience is when you put the headset on, this is managed and provisioned, um, empowered by the Workspace ONE tool. Um, we worked with that team to um, develop this. Um, but what you're able to do here, we wanted to create essentially um, a spatial computing environment. Not, and uh, what, what we mean by that is, you know, a lot of VR applications are kind of um, transactional, one-to-one. -one. You put VR on to play this game. Um, you put VR on to do this one application. We wanted to create an experience around that. So um, we worked with the team to make the ability to be able to launch four um, simultaneous um, 2D applications. So uh, we actually have a lot of our pilot members that love working in VR. <laughs> so they're, they're able to connect in, you know, Bluetooth keyboard, and they're able to work in this space, um, just as what they call it an in infinite number of monitors that they have, you know, when they um, uh, launch multiple applications. Um, but you see that there's um, several applications that you can launch that, that are familiar to 
um, our colleagues, whether it be Slack, whether it be L365, but most importantly, one of the apps that we've partnered with is the team that meet in VR around um, our collaboration and meetings. And we spent a lot of time in this application um, developing this experience uh, with the team around um, you know, our physical space and uh, making sure that you know, uh, as we go into VR that there was one, uh, uh, ease of use, uh, but more importantly, familiarity um, in the experiences. So what you're going to see here uh, is one of our conference rooms in Palo Alto and uh, our team's going to be in there. You see um, April over there in the conference room. Uh, if Jal, if you can wave at April, she'll wave back. Um, so we're in a room, there's Walter. And so we have ad hoc whiteboarding. Uh, we have collaboration. Walter and April can um, shake hands. Um, if someone comes over to Jal, they can shake hands if they will. Um, but most importantly, this is a persistent space uh, that you know, we can you know, use the whiteboards, we can use the displays, um, we can come back to it as a, a recurring meeting, just like we would a physical um, environment. Uh, we spent time you know, recreating our, our spaces here, but one of the most important things that we've found in leveraging this tool is the sense of connection and togetherness uh, that we have. Our team actually runs our um, bi-weekly AV team meetings in, in VR, and it's great you know, to be able to connect with our team members from India, um, Bulgaria, and all over the world that you know, we haven't been able to see in over a year because of the pandemic, but you know, we're able to give virtual hugs, we're able to give you know, handshakes, and to collaborate uh, you know, in a way that we used to before. And so again, our vision here is to connect you know, this uh, collaboration modality with other seamless uh, collaboration tools like Zoom and Teams and Slack to make sure that we're creating that horizontal fabric. Uh, now, one of the things I want to highlight on uh, this experience is that you don't necessarily need a VR headset uh, to participate in, in the, the activities that we have here or to consume uh, the services. What was one of the, the things that we were very, very, very um, adamant on when we launched the service. So every application uh, that we have is consumable across desktop, mobile, and VR. And so what we're showing you here um, is an uh, application that we're using to develop um, immersive storytelling and keynotes. Uh, so uh, uh, one of our VPs in uh, sales asked us to put together a presentation for her to send out to her leaders, um, you know, where in place of an offsite where they normally would have came around the world um, and, and, and collaborated in person in one space, uh, they wanted to do something a little bit different, you know, to give a keynote and to take people and put people in the content and bring people together within that. We've also partnered with the HR team around creating immersive training and scenario-based uh, training. So I'm sure if you've, uh, if you've been uh, to any you know, standard HR training, you know, it's 2D, sometimes not even a video, it's a slide that you click through. And so retention and engagement were the two things that we uh, work with the team here to you know, kind of focus in on and solve in, in VR. And so what you're seeing here is a training, this is a manager training. If Jao were to click one of the um, options there, the next scene starts playing. So really you're able to create um, an immersive moment uh, uh, with your, your employees and your HR teams, but more importantly, create that retention and that um, interactivity during these sessions that um, you don't always get with the 2D experiences. And then lastly, we've spent a lot of time with our real estate teams uh, focusing on how we create campus tours to um, you know, connect our, um, uh, our colleagues and our customers and people that don't get the opportunity to you know, go around and see our physical spaces. Uh, we give them the opportunity to go and do that at their leisure. So we're also leveraging VR for campus tours um, and orientation for um, new employees. So this is actually our Sophia um, new office in Sofia. Um, it's a beautiful office. I was a part of the team that helped um, you know, um, design and build. Um, but one of the things is that since the pandemic, no one's been able to go there. Uh, but if you look at the stats on this virtual tour, there's hundreds, actually thousands of people that have taken this tour, gone through, um, seen the office, uh, you know, have, have you know, gotten orientated, especially as you know, we're starting to reopen our offices. This is a tool that um, our teams are using to um, show people the difference in you know, what was before and what we're going to do today um, to support our in-person um, um, activities and, and, and meetings and stuff. 